Yo, what's up? It's Eric Sermon, the Green Eye Bandit, half of EPMD, throw the Death Squad. Check me out on the Bootleg Kev Podcast. Yeah. Hey, before we start the interview, I'd like to shout out our good folks at Imperial Extraction. Now, if you go to imperialextraction.com right now, you don't have to buy anything. Nothing at all. You literally can get a free THCA diamond loaded pre-roll. So many flavors. This is the GMO cookies delivered to your door for free. Okay? Promo code bootleg at checkout. Imperialextraction.com. Get a free, I mean, look at this thing. This is a premium pre-roll. All you have to do is go to the website, put in the promo code, and they're just going to send you one for free. What are we talking about? Go do that. Let's get to the interview. Bootleg Cab Podcast, special guest in here, a legend. Eric Sermon is in the building. Welcome, sir. What's up? What's going on, man? Uh, you know, just I was just telling my boy that it feels strange because it's a long time to be back on the to be back on the scene and doing you right. know, the promos and doing stuff like that. Now it's podcasts like yeah. you and different type of things. So it's a little strange though, but I'm cool. Yeah, man. I mean, look, you've been through it all. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy because mm-hmm. you somehow like. Not a lot of people can say that they have the longevity to have been through every like era of music in terms yeah. of like you went from cassettes to CDs mm-hmm. to streaming, uh, yep, <laughs> Napster. Yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? I did all of it. Yeah, again, from 1988 to 2024, that's a long time. That's a long time, man. And mm-hmm. it was so many different hats, whether it's being a record executive, whether it's being behind the scenes producing records. Yep. It's just... It's yeah. a, it's a lot, man. It's a I I, I flash back on it again. It's, just, it's, it's a it's a blessed career to be having, and to still be here, and then being in front of y'all doing the, you know with, with all the young people, and letting them know what time it is. Mm-hmm. You know, a few things was going on, and 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 it's all in the name of music. You know. Yeah. Well, like, let me give you my. So I as uh, I'm I'm 37. I just turned 37. So when I was a kid, I first got hip to. Death Squad. Right, yes. So that was how I was introduced to you, because I was a Red Man fan. Right. And Method Man and Red Man, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's how I got hip to like Keith Murray. But I was the kind of kid who, I still have all of my Source magazines, all my double XLs. So I would go back and like do my research on the Five Mike albums and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So the first album of EPMD that I bought, I bought it used at the warehouse, and it was, I think it was your house third album. It was the one that had the record with Redman and the record with LL. Yes, yeah, so that's third album. Yeah, business as usual, the rampage. Yep, yeah, with yep. the cops on the front. Yep, yep, mm-hmm. yep. yep. And, um, and so that was my first introduction, because I always like, knew who, EPMD, EPMD. Right. So that was kind of like, I had It's like, crazy that you mentioned that, because that, would, that ended up getting a full mic on that record right mm-hmm. yep yep but it's funny like just like 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 my era of like hip-hop was like like late 90s no, of course yeah i know early yeah, 2000s like but i got to yeah. you know i got to like kind of go back and like get the mm-hmm. the, the brand newbian album and get yes. all the tribe shit and get the epmd shit and right so um but nah man it's, it's been dope to see just kind of like your like evolution talk to me about like the new project because it's you're doing like collabs with everybody i know the new single's got salt and pep on it right yeah well i had the idea of doing COVID time yeah. you know what i'm saying so COVID stopped things mm-hmm. but before the hip-hop 50 i already had ideas of just my colleagues not being here i just figured that you know you never know all, all of us are still here yeah just because you got young people we still have us that's living too people want to hear music but they stop making music so i wanted to facilitate that i wanted to be able to say you know what let me make records on people that come from the era that people would love to hear if they was able to make music. Mm. So that's where the dynamic duos came into play at. So so I wanted to get, of course, like it's like twenty five rap groups. Yeah. That are duos. Right. So but I just picked it for the volume one what, what I can get off now. So for you, it was the inspiration was like, let me do this now because I have this idea now because, like you said, during COVID, we were losing people. You never know when people are gonna be yeah, here, not right. gonna be mm-hmm. here. Who all's on the project? Yeah, the project is loaded. It's loaded. Um, um, I got Biggie Smalls and Tupac. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's going to blow everybody's away. These are are these unheard verses? It's you, it's, it's not. I, I don't. To me, the they are not um, unheard, but the way I put it together, okay, it just sounds new. Okay, you know, um, Lil Wayne and Game. Um, Mob Deep, MOP, Red and Meth. Do you have Mob Deep and MOP on the same song? 
No. Okay, okay. okay. These are just dynamic duos. Don't okay. forget, two people. Okay, two people oh, on each oh, song. You, you okay. And are you handing production? Right. Okay. S- Cypress Hills. Dog Pound. EPMD, of course. Um, this is impressive so far. 8-Bullet MJG. Woo! I think I... I, 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 I I caught everybody, I think. I, I, that's I mean, a lot. yeah. That's a lot. I, 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 I said Snoop and Nate Dogg, right? No, yeah. you didn't. Yeah. Snoop and Nate Dogg? Mm-hmm. Jesus. So, for you, like, I always wonder as a producer, right? Like, if you know, like, let's say the Biggie and the Tupac song, do you already have that beat made or do you get the verses and do you. No, I have it. I, as a producer, you got records. You know what I'm saying? You make certain stuff. If you don't. If you don't have it, then you make it. I was going to say, when you hear those two verses from Biggie and Pac, does that inspire you to make the beat off of those verses, or did you already have that? No, beat? I already had something okay. that I wanted. I wanted to make sure that I, I didn't want to make a regular record. I didn't want to make a, just a hip-hop record. I wanted to rock, because both of them was best, best on melody mm-hmm. and more r and b type situations. So that's what I based my thing on when I had when I was making it. Like, okay, I want to make it a, a, a song song. Something that Biggie would rock on, something that Pac would rock on too. It felt comfortable, and most of them, they records are melody. Yeah, you know, it's not really you know the hip hop, you know, the kicking. Well, you know, we've had we we have so many uh, different uh, uh, attempts at uh, at well known producers that we all love and know Mm -hmm. that haven't done the best job, I would say, with certain Tupac or Biggie records (laughs) after they passed. I I I I, like as for me, I, I just felt that. It, it wasn't something that I was trying to do to make the biggest record. I just did what felt good to me. Right. No, that's what uh, I like, like, that's so what we want. At the end yeah. of the day, it was... We want something that... I feel like it's all about like if I could hear them like actually being on that record when they were alive, that's, that when makes it dope. It makes it crazy because I think that they probably would have been friends later on. Yeah. I think that all that beef would have stopped eventually because of what they had before that. Yeah. But 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 the way I did it, you would think they was in there together. Oh, that's fire! I was gonna say um, you had like a a really uh, early opportunity to work with Biggie, right? Before before we really knew who he was, is that? Is yeah, that- I mean, yeah, the, I mean, my story is ill on artists because you because, do have because, yeah, you do have because, quite the because, ear, because, you know. Because but mine still is documented as far as people talking. Yeah, Rick Ross on my basement, Fifty Cent in my basement. Fucking ludicrous on my door. The, the game, Wu Tang Clan. Raekwon says I almost signed with Eric. Like you know, I mean, this this thing of mine's uh, what I was able to um, to see and 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 Biggie Smalls on my first video set. To well, my man brought him to the barbershop shop. Okay, for me to see, and then uh, when I shot hitting switches, my first single, he was around the whole time. Why I do every scene, you know? And then he told Tracy Waple, was like, yo, I want to go on that Eric Sermon album, but I already had artists already. And then I had, you know, I had my own group, so I wasn't trying to do something new. But at that time, I could have, you know, probably would have had that. Did you, because I know Biggie had like a, a, a buzz going around New York, but at that time, did you kind of see what eventually ended up coming to be, you know, like? Yeah. I, I didn't, again, my concentration wasn't on that because I had my you own You had your own crew. shit you were put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I had my own crew. His squad was the biggest thing running. Right. You know, like, so Dr. Fex, Redman, Eric Sir, I mean, EPMD yeah. was the biggest shit running. So it was like, so at the time, it wasn't a, me looking at anything else, you know? Um, talk to me about Redman, man, because I, I, I think somehow he's turned out to be one of the more slept on rappers ever because he's one of the greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think like, you know, I just saw the the reaction online from some of the young people that when Killer Mike won his Grammy, which he deserved to yeah, win. Yeah, at 48. And you know. he deserved to win it because he had the best rap album of the he year did. last year. Yep. Um, but I feel like these days, like a, a guy like Redman, like, you know, when I'm growing up, like Redman's like the goat. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like Muddy Waters and There's a Dark Side and mm-hmm. Blackout and go on and on and on. Death Squad. What was it like kind of like uh, being around Redman early? Like what did you see in him that, um, you know, kind of had you bring him into the fold? Just the the, the 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 metaphors, the way that he rhymed, you know, the the, the wordplay, everything about me was as uh, far as um, the rappers that I was able to get, like Das Effects and them. Everybody was Keith they Murray. Had the, yeah, they had everybody that. had something different. Keith yeah. Murray had the, the big words. 
Reggie had, you know, I got AIDS, bitch. You know, mm -hmm. the Eminem, what Eminem yeah. like yeah, the yeah. You know, as far as in Dr. Fx had the crazy Dr. flow. Had, they, Dr. Fx changed the game mm -hmm. because you had all these groups that either emulated them mm -hmm. or made records doing the Iggity. And when you get a call from Ice Cube saying, you want, you know what, Dr. Fx, this is Cube calling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To, to put them on the record, you know that th these guys are making an impact. So, but again, but with Reggie, it was this, that. I think that I, I saw him at a, a, a club in Newark called Sensations, and he was with Do It All from Lords of the Underground. Mm -hmm. Do It All rhymed, and Reggie was his DJ. Crazy. Right? But then, again, he became Lords of the Underground later on, but yeah. he was like, my man rap. And Reggie had one line, he said, I float like a butterfly, sting like the rock group. I thought it was going to be like, you know, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Yeah. But he, the metaphor went... Float like a butterfly, sting like a rock group. So all the make, I'm like, yo, nobody does this. Right. At this time, 1991 or two. Crazy. It, he was already ahead, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I talked to him, and it was fast. I'm like, yo, he Reggie was so ill that I gave him my number, but not I didn't write it down. He remembered he, he it. Remembered it. That's how it used to be back in the day, though. You might meet a girl in the mall, and like she'll tell you her number, but she won't write it down, and it's like. And and he said it took, it took a couple of days for him to realize what the number was, and a few days later he called the phone, but he he had to remember the number. That's crazy. What was that conversation like? Like hey, I'm trying to. Nah, work. it's like it wasn't no cop. Me, I'm just I'm a nonchalant person. So at the end of the day, like yo, you want to do this? And plus, he's a he's already a fan. He don't right. believe this is happening. Like oh shit, I'm I'm on the phone with Eric. He's inviting me over. Yeah. So that that was it. That's crazy, man. Um, how do you feel about like? Because uh, I feel like hip hop these days is like. I always tell people if you want to find good shit, you gotta like it's there. Yeah. You just have to. It's just not being pushed. Like, like we just talked about the Killer Mike mm. thing. But in terms of like, um, you know, you've been wrapped up in certain like hip hop uh, beef situations, and nowadays it's. I feel like it's. It almost might be more amplified these days than it was back then because back then you had to go spend money. To pick up the source and or or the, or yeah. the Vibe magazine and read mm -hmm. the interview in which a rapper was calling out another rapper or go buy a DVD or whatever. These days, you just open your phone and there's 30 blogs talking about whatever conflicts yes. going on. Like, mm -hmm. like, how do you feel about like the current state of like hip hop in terms of the media and well, just that kind of stuff? I mean, listen, to me, it made it accessible to everybody, which is a cool thing. Right. But I just think that. Um, the oversaturation of music took the excitement away from it. Definitely. You know, as far as something coming out, something like... Waiting know, for Tuesdays. Waiting for two, yeah, waiting for that, though, mm -hmm. too. But to make a long story short, I feel like, to me, music is making a, a comeback. And if, if people aren't seeing that, then they're going to be in trouble. Because I'm here with you at this time in my career. Yeah. Making music. And... And... I'm going to make sure that the music is w what we know music to be. Like, I'm not trying to to um, play the game of what everybody else is doing. Everybody already doing that. And people are getting tired, and it's being proven. Um, the sampling that Hitmaker is doing, meanwhile, like taking it makes crazy. old yeah. records, mm -hmm. is changing the tempo back. Right. Who cares if it's Foxy Brown? The tempo's back. Who cares if it's... Um, Brandy um, no, you, and, and Mace the tempo's back right. so that's what's changing the game even if they are sampling it's still changing people the don't tempo. realize the tempo like yeah it's like like the 85 to like 100 BPM records are like far and few between these days it's right. like but it's changing so that means that music is going to be put back in the forefront of what music feels like mm. to feel good to, to inside your soul to make you who, who, if they still dancing because I went to a party whatever they're just sitting there with their phones and, and popping girls, bottles girls ain't people are standing to, at the, in their sections girls there's not a lot of dancing anymore girls ain't talking to guys right. guys ain't talking to girls like what type of shit is this mm -hmm. this is what we're living in but I just feel that at this time music is making a change that's why, that's why everybody's coming we ain't gonna name no artists though but a lot of artists came out and fucked up and they had to go back in the studio and make rap records. A lot of people. Well, I want to shout out uh, 21 Savage just put out an album that was heavy on substance, heavy on raps, 
and a lot of people wouldn't have expected. I mean, I, 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 I've kind of paid attention to his evolution over the years, but his new album is crazy. Kev, what we're talking about is not foreign. The game is done shifted. I agree. And, and if people don't wake up, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to get left at the bus stop, man. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not sitting there to be be hating and the whole and this and this and that. This is just the way it's at. And we and there's there's moves being made that people don't know about yet. That that um that some of the the, the people that we know, the powers that be, aren't going to be in there. Yeah. And they're about to move this thing forward. So now, talent. It's gonna with no no algorithms, no how many likes right. you got, none of that stuff. It's all right. about are you ill and are you dope? That's where we headed to. That's Talent. how it used to be. As a, you know, when when I was growing up, it was like, yo, yeah, of course, it was. It was about the bars. It was about who had the crazy, you know, Neil Armstrong freestyle. You know, mm-hmm. like, but all the big writers, like my man got a group coming out to this um, sound with Usher's the, the girl. What's the girl's name? Bernard? The Simeons. Yeah, the Simeons. But they didn't go to the new people. They went to. The Brian Michael Coxes, right. the dreams, right. the, the you know, the, the these people who write mm-hmm. music, yeah, like the Money Love song. Mm. This is where we, this is where we're going. Even Victoria Monet, but what she did, she wrote an incredible oh, my record. Crazy, no, for sure. So, so, so this is where we at. Somebody who she, it took her 15 years, she said. So again, the, the talent is going to outweigh the popularity. This is where we at, and people can. This is where we going. So, and, and so I just. Me being out too, I give my assessment on what I feel for young people to know because this is important. I don't come because I'm the I'm a person who's who's the so called old head. Right. You know, I've never been broke in my life. <clears throat> never gonna be. So I I don't come from a point where somebody who's mad because I'm not in the game. No, you're you've been yeah you ain't been, never went nowhere. I'm in it to also let you know that in for 35 years. When you get called, you can go. You can go perform. Somebody sure. can come and watch you. Yeah. This new era, nobody coming to see them. Right. So if they didn't save or have somebody do something for them, that person who turns our age is not going to be trying to go see fuck pussy ass shit. Whatever. Right. It won't match. No, I, I I say this and like I don't. I, you know, fifties obviously a generation after you, but uh, I just went to the fifty co- concert, right? The mm-hmm. tour, and I was just like. God, I miss this. Like people not rapping over their fucking tracks. Like you know what I mean. That's like, the weird, that's the crazy too. And some of our veterans are doing that. I'm like, where you learn that? How you rhyming over the beat? We yeah, never, it's we, like we people never did that. It's crazy. Yes. So 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 this um, showmanship. Yeah, all this comes into play again with all the tours that's going. The new people are struggling. All the veterans sold I, out. Yep, it the made N- Nas and Mutang sold out. Fifty Cent every, sold out. Every yep. the Beyonce, everybody yep. that's a veteran had no problem touring. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I I know you and DJ Quick have worked together. I always kind of equate yeah, I you love and Dave. First yeah. of all, Quick is one of the greatest of all time, yeah. as are you. But I always kind of equate both of you guys as being like somehow underrated producers. Mm-hmm. Because I don't think people understand, like, Quick is, like, one of the greatest producers of all time, and you're not too shabby yourself. What are some of your, like, bigger just production placements I know, but, but for people who don't know? I, 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 I love David, but nobody did what I did. When it comes down to records produced, R&B, and hip-hop music... I, my track record's too big. I just mean like explain, like tell us, because I, right. I feel like a lot of people who are watching this don't know your. Yeah, because again, I've been starting off R and B in the beginning since Joe DeC, since Mary, since Chico the Bard, since D'Angelo, since SWV, since In Vogue, since Black Street. These records were done by by me. These are all R and B records from the Keith Sweats all the way down. This is me at R and B level, right? With the biggest of the biggest at the time. And I mean, so so so, so now you're talking about. When you talk about rap music, I did everybody, and and so whatever you want to name, you want to name, you well, can name it. Well, well, like, what what do you think is like like a, a, for because there's people who are watching this who might not know who you are. So give me like your if you had to say t- top five biggest songs, people will just know. It's off the top of your head. It's off the top of your head. You got so many. Me? Yeah. Just that you made that that we don't know because you're not rapping on them. You're not. You know what I mean? Like people, nobody's looking at the credits anymore. 
Back in the day, you used to get the booklet. You used to go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but 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 the kids, the kids won't know that because again, how how how, because way I'm again, my stuff was mostly was mostly nineties. Right. You know what I'm saying? So again, if if I was said if I did four three two one. You know about LO, with LO Cool J and with with DMX and, and them at one time. If I did both how highs on Red and Meth, so people don't know that. Oh, Red and Meth is your yeah. That, that's my those are my boys. Yeah, I did all of them. The Blackout, the Blackout One Two. Yeah. So all them too. And then again, me with um, Fifty Cent in the beginning. My um, Heat Wave. Uh, Heat, Heat Wave was one of the first singles before he got shot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, Reservoir Dogs with on, on Jay Z on, on on the album, crazy. Exactly, you know. Hey, what, what what's it for you like being the guy who made the beat? Because I always hear Ron Browse talk about being the guy who made the Ether beat. Mm-hmm. What was it like being the guy who made the four three two one beat? Like with everything that kind of came with that. Yeah. Um, again, it was Track Masters did the original record. Okay. And then was, um, it, it was like it didn't fit. So I told Kevin and Leo. There was the remix, and you let just me get it. the remix. Yeah, yeah, but my my song was the remix, but ended up being the the, the main the, one, the main record, right? Exactly, because yeah. nobody never heard that. Yeah, yeah, version. yeah. But again, I just wanted to make my own what I thought it should sound like, and then I wanted to put the rappers in the order that I wanted to put the rappers in. Of course, I wanted to put Red MF, but MF wasn't together on the stuff the one I heard. So of course, I'm putting two together back to back, and then. Um, I I had to piece LL Cool J's vocals together because um, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't flowing right on the beat, so I had to chop it. Oh know? shit! Yeah, and um, and that's why you hear me ad libbing on top of him, so I could fill the holes. Wow! Up. I'm adding in the LL Cool J and the holes. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, we got to stop the interview. Shout out to our family at My Bookie. That's right. Uh, listen, if you go to MyBookie.ag right now and you sign up with a new account. Using the promo code BOOTLEG, you're going to get up to $1,000 first deposit bonus. Now, what is my bookie? First of all, I've been gambling on my bookie for at least the last 10 years, getting this money, all right? And this weekend, it's all about the big game. Super Bowl's going down, man. Chiefs versus Niners. You know, I'm not going to lie. I talked myself into taking the Chiefs plus three, and I think I'm – I don't know if I want to root for Patrick Mahomes. So I might just say fuck it and bet the Niners minus three. I don't know. With that being said, you don't even have to pick either team. You could pick the color of Gatorade that's going to get poured at the end of the game. You could pick heads or tails, the coin flip at the beginning of the game. You could pick who's going to score a touchdown. So much going on. MyBookie.ag. Sign up with your uh, promo code bootleg. That's my promo code. Sign up with the promo code bootleg. And uh, you're going to get up to $1,000 in your first deposit bonus plus a $10 casino chip to spend in the casino because they got the full-fledged online casino popping, all right? MyBookie.ag. Um, it is going to make your Sunday, if you're going to watch the big game, a lot more interesting. Trust me when I say, all right? Also, want to give a big shout-out to the good folks at Blue Chew. Don't forget to go over to uh, BlueChew.com and use the promo code BOOTLEG right now. Yes, right now, all right? And you're going to get yourself a free month supply of Blue Chew. Because everyone's always asking me, does Blue Chew work? Yes, of course. But you can find out for yourself. You can get a free month supply uh, sent right to your doorstep in discreet packaging for only $5 shipping when you go to BlueChew.com and use the promo code BOOTLEG. All right. What is Blue Chew, you ask? Well, if you have a penis and it can always be a little harder, it c- maybe you're going through some erectile dysfunction. Maybe you get a little nervous before you gotta, you know, perform. That blue chew I have you fucking just rocked up. You know what I mean? So uh, same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. All right. No awkward doctor visits. It's all online. You don't have to go and make an appointment and go sit in a waiting room and talk to somebody about your cock problems. No, it all goes down right on the website, bluechew.com, all right? It's very discreet, uh, and, and when I say it works, it works. Trust me, all right? Bluechew.com, promo code bootleg, and try it for free for a month. Let's get back to the interview. Um, what about uh, being there? Like, like do, you, do you remember, like, when the idea came to be to put, like, Meth and Red's, like, their chemistry was so crazy, but, what, like, what to the, make what, them a group, you know what I mean? What, like, what the label... They was doing that, um, the, 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 no, the documentary first. Right. The show? The show. Yeah, I got that on, to, I had that on VHS. They wanted a single, yeah. Red and Meth. So 
that record, I did the original one, mm -hmm. that one to the hardcore version. Great movie, by the way. Uh, it uh, needs to get on Netflix because oh. there's you'll see Wu Tang arguing and shit. I think it's like you got it, Beth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how high was was something that was made, and it was like again, it was. I remember being a real smoky sex session. Oh, I bet. You know, as far as like you know, well, you can't see contact. You know, high. People probably think I'm just like just saying that, but it was really, and I'm not a smoker. So, right. you know, that was whatever. And I don't, I think that's probably where that came from, you know. So once th that was going to happen, I was like, like, we're going to shoot a video. I'm like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the first, those two together, we're going to shoot this, this record? Nah. Because, again, it wasn't no, it wasn't. It was a, a hardcore record. Right. Just rhyming everywhere. Don't forget, I, I had to piece that together to make the song work when I did the the, the, the radio version. Mm -hmm. So long story short, once they get to the video shoot, don't forget, they never heard the song. Oh, so, so they haven't heard that and heard your final product yet. So they had the video shoot. And Fly, Robin, Fly comes on, and they cursing everybody out. Me, Dion Martell... Leo Russell, hey, what, the what the fuck, fuck is, this? is this? Yo, because these are hardcore people. I, I got this shit fucking commercial as a motherfucker. Singing fucking melody the right. whole nine. And they end up shooting it, and the rest is history. And then the rest, and, and we got movies and TV shows. I know. <laughs> I, 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 out of the record, exactly, right, no doubt. Cause I, cause, because the Rizzo even said, yo, Eric, great job. You know, again, because everybody was kind of, not knowing where it was going, but Leo and them liked it. Yeah. So they was like, but you can imagine not showing up. I know they didn't hear the record. So you're going to be mad too to show up with the video and you hear and some And you, you hear some shit that you never even you heard. heard before, exactly. Yeah. Right? No, that's and, fair. And, and your vocals are cut. Mm. So where's the intro to this verse? Or where's the um, my other eight bars to this one? So all that's gone too. Um, talk to me about your production process these days because technology has... Uh, obviously evolved so much from when you first started producing. So what is your production setup these days? Because what, what was your OG setup? A Roland W30, a, okay. so a workstation. Okay. So, like people that use the ASR10? Yeah. Whatever, I had it, but I, I didn't like the way it was what it was moving for me. So uh, it worked for Timberland, for Kanye West, right. and people like that, but to me it didn't. But this station only had 15 seconds. Four, yeah, 15 seconds compared to a whole bunch of sample time. Right. So it was treated like an SP1200. The way I had it going, but I was able to play with it. So, because me being able to play, I wanted to not have just a drum machine. Right. I wanted this too. To keep so the keys workstation well, yeah. is what I what I like, um, what I worked on better. Even though I got every machine possible, All right, I just stayed with that. You know, it was well, better. Fast forward to twenty twenty four. What's the set? And then I moved to a um, a motif. Oh, okay. Because the motif had mad sampling time and it had 88 keys too that was heavy like a real piano. Because again, I got I want to play. I don't yeah. want to MIDI nothing. You know, I want to do this. Right. So, and I could also program too. So I'm used to a workstation. Like when I was doing Kanye West for the last, since May, as soon as I came into this session with me and him, workstation, ASR 10. No matter what, all those years in the 90s, one machine. So if it's not broken, you know what I'm saying? Why not? That. Yeah. So, so again, and I watch, I, I, I watch Jermaine Dupri on his thing when he's sitting down too. MP, at Rodney Jerkers, everybody's back on that one machine. Yeah, because it's like nowadays, like I'll see these like younger producers and they don't even, it's just the computer. The technology can't give you that. It right. can't give you that analog you're looking for or that field or whatever yeah. like that, that old machine is so weird that everybody went back and now the NPC just came out with the stem thing so now they got the stem so that's what the, the best part of technology right now is that stem thing so now the shit that we dreamed about like they talking over it you know nah but you can just now take now the vocals take out. <laughs> out beat out bass out whatever you can but sample still, anything now but even if you do have the technology, do you know what to do with it? You're That's still going to be whack. You can be whack with, with this machine. That's what I tell DJs. Whack without. I'm like, you're a whack DJ. It don't matter. It, don't it matter. got easier to be a DJ. Matter. You, if you're but, whack, you're whack. The people that, that know how to get busy, oh, it's a fucking it's a miracle worker. So you've been in with Kanye in the last few months, six months? Sir? I started in May 30th doing the first album. Then after I went to Italy, Ty Dolla Sign was there. 
So they had put some thing called Vultures together. Yeah. Even though I still made that project. I've heard a lot of it, yeah. Even though I still made that project, I, that wasn't what I was working on with him. So you were working on uh, a, a Yay album? Y3, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you ended up making the Vultures project, though? No, I ended up going to Italy in the fact that... Um, when I got there, Ty already had sung on one of my songs already. Oh, fine. Then, then I ended up doing another record too when I when I got to Italy, though too. So I was in between. So hopefully, when this is done, we we can get back to the Y three. The Y three, yes. Um, what? Because I know like Ye has this thing where he likes to go like certain cities and like you know my beautiful dark twisted fantasy was Hawaii. Right. Um, the click stuff was like, uh, I think it was like in Paris. I mean, he moves around, but what was like the Italy sessions like? What was that like? It's crazy. Yeah. Because we was in Sting's place. Sting? Yeah. Fire. So his, his villas was fantastic. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and the vibe in the room. It's crazy how Ye like PA speakers. Yeah, not like, not like what you would think, right? It's literally like you don't care about the bleeding, don't care about how loud it is. He's wanting in the to be room? loud. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The two PAs and the and, and 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 the two subs on both of them, and that's it. I was in this. Uh, well, I was well, in, in every room. Yeah, we at the hotel we had it, at, at the warehouse we had it, and 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 what was that? South, no. South Central. Yeah. I was in Vegas. Um, Ty invited me out to Vegas when the album was supposed to come out, and we ended up in Ye's suite. And same thing. It's just two speakers, and he's Tiger was in there, YG was in there, mm. uh, Little Dirk was in there, all recording while just the room is still rooming. Like oh, yeah. it was never like everybody shut up. It was we was in the Edition Hotel. Crazy, <laughs> that's crazy. On the eighth floor, just that's wild. And man. no guests, nobody said shit. Did you and Ty were you guys able to bond a bit? I mean, obviously you guys. I died, yeah, yeah, because because his his brother. When I got when I first saw Ty, he stopped playing all Eric Sermon shit. He's a hip hop head for real. Because he was saying that my '95 album is what his brother put him on. And when I told you he played six records and knew them all, yeah. shocked the shit out of me. You guys got to do the, the Green Eyes thing, you know? <laughs> the Green Eyes duo. Yeah, so, but but and I, he's one of the greatest guys in all of the world. Yeah, like, he's amazing. He's a great songwriter. And he's a, he's, uh, he's a great guy though, like a great human. Yeah, I I I, I he was mad nonchalant. Stayed smoking, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But again, I, I'm the old head inside the place, right. you know? Because again, I'm nine years older than Ye, though, too. So even though it's, it's me and him and um, and the writers, you know, whatever, such and such, you know, give out too much. But Ye is a person that whatever people say is not what I experience. He, music is music. And that passion that you have as a producer, yeah. when you hear something dope, it's like, yo, same shit. Yeah. And that's all it was about, about, yo, being whatever. The, 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 you can't take nothing from his ear, the vibe, the, the rhyming, the context, all of it. That's all I saw. I don't know no other shit. I just know what we was doing and how he felt about me. Right. You know? He's like, yo, Eric, he said, everybody in here, that person who's doing my wardrobe, the person who's building my building, the one who's doing my president campaign. He said, these people over here, everybody here geniuses. That's why you here. Hey, man. You know? That's some real shit. Yeah. Hey, take me back to you guys taking on Rapper's Delight because another terrible, uh, and, and, and I have to admit that I'm, I, I only knew the Death Squad Rapper's Delight. <laughs> So even when I, even to this day, like right. I, I know the OG rappers are like, but even right. to this day, like when I see, like when the OG rappers are like comes on, I sing the, the death squad version. Right. Like, what was that like? Did you guys initially get any sort of like blowback for like remaking no, such I a mean, heralded I, record? No, I, 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 listen, it wasn't something to, to do. It was, it was a project mm -hmm. that went on. MTV. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, they had all the groups. Pick old records. Oh, so you guys pick that because like, it was kind of the like, theme of the project. So Master P did six in the morning, whatever that. It's called in, in the beginning. Okay. Oh, I remember the the, right. the, uh, the, the there was like the knuckles with the rings yes, yep, on, the, yep. on the cover. Yeah, the ring I have the album. Right. You're in right. The, in, in the yeah. beginning. Yeah. So everybody did something on there. Yeah. So when they came and got us, this is what we chose because it was three of us. It was three, y'all. Yeah. Not knowing that it was going to 
to the video, MTV, it, the number one video. Like, yeah, we like, had you guys no brought I, the record back. Like, it, went, no, we, it, we beat Maxwell by 10,000 records to be number one album in the country. Crazy. Death Squad went number uno. Yeah. You know, because of what that was. But we didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. But we did get um, blowback from the original people. Because don't forget, they still torn with it. Yeah. So now the Death Squad then came and now it took away from them. It took a long time for them to be like, yo, because now when I see like, yo, what's up? Everything is love. But at one the Sugar time, Hill Gang wasn't fucking with it at first. Right? Because it's yeah. going to stop them from, from, from moving around. Yeah. You know? We don't know that. I feel like the other way to look at it is like, thanks for putting some more life into this song. And, but that's what eventually happened. Yeah. Because like, you know? did you see the Grammys? Tracy Chapman performed with uh, this country singer who, uh, she has a song called Fast Car from like 1980. Yeah, I know. Tracy, Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this, this country singer covered it. Wow. And like, it was a huge country song. But they did it at the Grammys, and so now Tracy Chapman's song oh, from yeah, 1988. Yeah. No, it's number one. Number one now. Yeah. It's number That's one. Dope. You're right. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. It's like. But, but believe me, I was telling my man the other day, like, and this is this, this, this not no, no boast or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, me owning my own publishing, everybody calls me. So if it was for all the 50 Cent shows, right. you know, whatever my placements, they got to call me direct. I was telling my man that. Music, I mean, the, the weekend is one of the most streaming artists in the world. 100%. Right? So, him and Metro Boomin did I Don't Want to Know. Creeping, yeah, yep. Which is your customer, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Only owe 4% of that, 4% of that, of that record, right? 4%. Of the original. Of, no, of that record, of Metro Boomin. You, I mean, yeah, yeah, of, of, of your customer on that song. So, you own 4% of Creeping. Of, of of the publishing right, right listen every four months guess how much it brings in uh, $200,000 Two twenty. wow that's crazy yo yo, yo yo but that's 240 but 240 that's, that's crazy how he was on the money yeah 4% Eric talk about track Wait, hold on. So let me get this straight. So when you, because like, you have to hear the song first before you clear it. Yes, even when they when they did the Mad Singer and mm -hmm. the Mad somebody on the Mad Singer song did the record. Yeah, Mad Singer called me. Wow. Everybody has to call because again, everybody is not fortunate. Because luckily, L Leo Cohen, his brother, made me made me me, and what's them made me me. So I didn't have to sell the publishing because mm. people sell publishing when they when they need to get the money. So luckily, I was able to survive without doing that. For you, like, uh, I think most people don't understand the, how important the pub game is because right. we always are pushed like, well, the streaming only pays this. If you get a million streams, it's like 3,800 bucks. But like, the real money is really in the pub, right? Like, if you can like own your publishing. Let's back this up. Yeah. Even though streaming might be less than one cent, there's still more money being made than you signed to a label. It's still more money being made if you don't sign to a label, is what you're if saying. If you assign to a label, okay, and you and 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 you are independent streaming, you is a chance that you can make more money than being on a major. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Even with the less than one penny. Yeah, it's it's rough because you. I mean, but 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 people don't know if you're not in the game, you wouldn't know that. But I have a streaming company, so I I I'm witness to what it makes. Right. Well, on the pub side, though, like, because I feel like the publishing side of music is not talked about enough, and I also feel like... Oh, no, people know. That, but you, what, you've seen all the arguments with the locks and puff and anybody with publishing. That's a, always been a big deal. No, I mean, I'm just talking about this new, these new kids, man. Oh, they don't have a clue. They have no idea. Because it's the 360 asthma. They'll just they're, come in, yeah. they'll be like, how yeah. much is my advance? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then they'll be like, that. oh, shit, I don't know my master's I or my know. pub. Oh, have nothing. Fuck. Yeah. Or they'll rush into a pub deal. They'll, they'll, they'll get one placement and then they'll... Do everybody hear what Kev is talking about? Because Kev don't got to do this, but he is doing this. He's just trying to, not to, 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 to downplay y'all, but to let y'all know what y'all have to do. Because this thing is not going to, it's not a lasting thing at this time. This, this, we live in a moment's times of popularity where things are fast food. Every new, every hour, something is coming. Yep. Yeah, and if you catch one placement as a producer, someone's going to offer you a co-pub deal, not an admin deal. And that co-pub deal, it could be, I mean, that means you're full partners with a publishing company. Yeah. 
And it could be 10 years. It could be in perpetuity. It could be a lot of different things. Whatever people say about the 401k or your retirement plan, this is what publishing is. It's, It's your life. If you're able to have some of it... Please grab as much as you can because you're going to get that mailbox money every uh, yeah. all the time. It, 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 it never stops, and then all of a sudden you might catch a placement, mm-hmm. like I just told you. Yeah, which you know, is crazy. It, it, How many years I, later? I, I know, but but it happens. But this is, I'm just giving you one. Yeah, this happens all the time. Yeah, I'm just giving you one thing about having publishing and what it can do for you. For sure, man. Um, for you on on this uh, on this new album. How cool was it to uh, give the fans? I mean, I know we're going to... We're, when, when's the album drop? April's... I think first week in April. First week of April. But how cool is it going to be to give the fans some new EPMD after all these years? Yeah, I mean, it's so crazy how, how the label will be like, yo, I like the EPMD record. And I'm like, are you saying because of me? You know what I'm saying? But I think that... I just think that the fans are going to be happy if I was on there burping. Right. Because right. it's a... It, it's just a... Cause it's a new EPMD song, yeah, or a new Cypress Hills record, right? You know, what or I'm saying? Like new Mob Deep. So people, oh yeah, the Mob Deep shit is crazy because it's because it prodigy. All right, you know? Peter Prodigy. You know, just, so so, but again, when people hear it, they like, oh, okay, and then hopefully I did my job for it to feel like it's supposed to feel like. Because mm. don't forget, our colleagues don't go because they either scared or, like you said, the records don't come out. Correctly, right, 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 right. You know, so hopefully I was able to correct it too, too. Like when I was when I was here with Dre, mm-hmm. as you see on my on Instagram when I was me and Dre was yeah. in the studio with everybody, you know, it went viral. Me and Dre made five records, you know, and and he made three in one night. Crazy, you know, all for my production though. And then I did we did another one with Snoop. That post be on the new on the new Snoop record, and and I also did one with him that me and him rhymed on, which was crazy. Wow, you know. Um, but again, Kevin, it's just a blessing because I don't want to. I, I never talk, so I, I hate to be big and big enough myself because I'm not used to doing that. I've always been introvert, always been quiet. But again, at the end of the day. A lot of dope shit that has happened in the last couple of years for this to be what this is. And don't forget, this is only volume one. So is is it going to be a duos thing after? Of you, course. It, okay. So that I'm going to is my my brand. Well, yeah. Now. I mean, of course. So 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 now it's a brand of me making. So I'm already in in like um, saying you know um, you know with with with. Um, Saying about the Larry Junes and the and, and, and the Source Walkers and the, all these people that I'm looking at to do music with, you know the the the, the Cordes, the, the Freddie Gibson, all these other. You work with Freddie yet? I worked with Freddie back in 2014. Okay, okay. When he was, a when he was on Interscope, or no, no, 2014. No, no, no. no, no that no. was uh, that was uh, that was around the time he put out yeah uh, Bandana or, 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 or Pinata. Yeah, but that was I was there before that Listen, too. I've been he's you know, been one of my best friends since about 2010. Remember the DJ that was. Um, what's the DJ name? The one that's um, that he was signed to first in 2008, 2009. The, 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 ski. Ski. Yeah. I'm back there. He at was that working time. with Ski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that time. Yeah. So, I tell you, listen, Freddy's Kev, no, the, Freddy's no, one of the goats, man. No rappers that rapped didn't come to me. That's fine. None. If you was rapping, if you was a rapping ass motherfucker, you know what I mean? You had no, to... no, because only a few of us did production. Right. You only can go for to a few people. Right. That's crazy. Hey, we got to stop the interview again. I know. You hate when I say that. It's okay. Hey, shout out to our family at Odd Socks, though. Ooh-hoo. Listen, let me tell you something. Odd Socks just celebrated their 10-year anniversary. Congratulations to our family. Um, right now, you can get 20% off the most comfortable socks in the world. Yes, they got them. Um, I'll tell you what socks you can't buy at oddsocksofficial.com. You can't buy those blue leg Kev socks. No, you got to DM me. If you DM me for a pair of these socks, I'll send them to you in the mail for free. All right. With that being said, uh, the most comfortable socks in the world. Also, they got the draws, um, all the licenses. Look, we got Sprite here. We got Doritos. We got How High. We got Jaws. Chucky. What are we talking about? WWE, the fucking Power Rangers. Mmm. Shout out to Odd Socks. Oddsocksofficial.com, promo code bootleg. Save 20% off at checkout. Get you a pack. Thank me later. Also, shout out to King Palm. Yes, that's right. No tobacco, no nicotine, 
The cleanest smoke, period. It's what I smoke, man. They got all the flavors. Uh, and let me tell you something. What's dope about King Palm is they got these uh, amazing terp activated flavors. Let me show you how it works. Let me grab one right here. So uh, this would be the King Palm energy flavor. This would be the, uh, the banana. Oh, the banana's good. Terpene infused tips. You squeeze and you activate the flavor. You hear that? Yeah. yeah. All right. It's so all I smoke, man. Shout out to King Palm. I love what they got going on, man. I love the flavors. Uh, I love that it's organic. I love that it's, it's just a nice, clean leaf. That's right. It's the best leaf to smoke. What you could do right now, go to kingpalm.com, use the promo code bootleg, and you're going to save half off, half off, 50% off at checkout, whatever they got. They got wraps. They got grinders. They got ashtrays. They got trays. They got all kinds of shit. What are we talking about, man? Go to kingpalm.com, or you can go to your local 7-Eleven. You can go to your local smoke shop and get loaded up with some King Palm. Let's get back to the interview. Um, tell me about... Uh, there was the, the 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 Martin Lawrence Danny DeVito soundtrack. I forget the name of the movie. Yeah. But, um, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? But it sparks your biggest solo hit because I remember being a kid and like I could not turn on the fucking radio oh, yeah. without hearing music. It was huge. It was everywhere. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't. I to me again, music wasn't not supposed to leave my downstairs. That guy's my friend Bernard. He stole yeah. my CD. Crazy. I played it for him, and he stole it out my CD player. Then he went to California, and went to a Clear Channel, um, the the record convention, and then I'm sitting on the steps of the W. A lady comes down and says, "Yo, your song with Marvin Gaye is great." So now you can imagine me, Kev. I'm losing my mind. Like, what is she talking about? And who told her about this? Crazy. The whole convention had heard the record. Next thing you know, I go to Miami. I'm number one. I'm number one. And next thing you know, it just, whatever, because the head of Clear Channel, I forgot his name was at the time, he he loved it. And oh, that was it. It was a smash. And then, Jimmy Iovine, of course, I worked with him before 95. Mm -hmm. He was like, um, for the soundtrack. Yeah. So the soundtrack was moving. But Clive Davis and Tommy Mottola was like, listen, what do... What do you want? So I went to Tommy Matola and said, yo, it's $2 million, you know, whatever like that. But now I went to Clive. Clive said, I tell Eric I give him $4 million and I give him half. As far as 50-50, me and him. You make money, I make money. Wow. That, that's how huge the song was. Was that, because, it, was, was there already a buzz for it before it like officially was like? The buzz, uh, yeah, because it happened in L.A. Okay, so, so everybody so, so had already heard the record already, and knew it. It was already being passed around. Was in, was that was at the convention. Everybody that was at the convention. Yeah. It's clear channel. So it was So then you have to worry about like, okay, as long as y'all go get this cleared. Because then you gotta clear it. But that's what happened. Yeah. We, we got stuck up because it was a hundred fifty thousand dollars to the estate and then fifty thousand to the lawyer. So it cost two hundred. To clear the record? Yep, to, for the Crazy. whole process. Such mm -hmm. a great record though, man. Yeah. But, yeah. but it was worth it two hundred because it, it it gave me it gave me it gave me a career. It gave me another half of my life. Yeah, because then after that you have React and you all know, of it. Yeah. React. Nobody, nobody knew that I was going to come back with something like that afterwards. Because again, when something that big happens, they're like, "Oh no, that's it for him." And I came right back mm -hmm. with with that. Yeah, for sure, you man. Um, talk to me. Uh, you, Kev, Kev, you know it's like, go ahead, Kev. Yeah, no, I'm a hip hop fan. <laughs> man. Um, you're part of one of the greatest duos of all time. Who's the, who's the Mount Rushmore of rap duos for you? Give me the top four of rap duos of all time. Run, run DMC. Yep. Um, Outkast. Yeah. You you can't say yourself. Right. Uh, that you can't. Let me see. Um, wow, the, the the duos. I'm stuck right now. Give me the top four, man. Mount Rushmore. So far, you're two for two, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 why, why am I going blank? There's so many. There's 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 Mob Deep. There's oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 right right okay you got it okay well I, I, I'm gonna go. And then that's the other thing. Yeah, Do we yeah. consider I the know. producer rapper the, 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 as a duo? The, 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 the mob, both people yeah, have to yeah. rap. The Mob Deep, the Gangsta, the definitely, and then you have. See, I don't look at. The, the the down never do because Eric B and Rakim because they put both names but it's, but that's my favorite rap in the world but again you you have um, 
MOP, which is an underrated group in the Shout world. Shout out to Billy Dan's Fame. I, like, that's, when it comes to underrated, <laughs> I, lyrically, oh, I mean, this fantastic. Fucking you know MOP was one of my favorite rap groups of all time. I saw them perform live, and they used to roll with that chick Fox, <laughs> right. the girl who's on Four Alarm Blaze, and uh, the sound guy kept, he was fucking with their sound at the show. And I'm like in the front row, and Fox beats the fuck out of the sound guy. Sound turns yeah. off. Sound turns off. There's no more. The concert's over. They haven't even done Annie Up yet. These fuckers got into the crowd and did Annie Up a cappella with the crowd. It was wow. so sick. Wow. Is, is, is Snoop and Dre a, a duo? Is it, no, I think I they got to be. In a, <laughs> I mean, they are, but I think they got to be like, yeah. it'd be like saying Raekwon and Ghost. It's like, mm-hmm. well, like uh, they were. I know. You're right. You're right. You're right. You can, yeah, but you I think Outkast, I think EPMD. Yeah. When I think duos, I think. I think Gangstar. I think, uh, yeah. but, I think but, Mob but, Deep. But, but not. But again, you you you, you like you said. For when you think about the, the salt duos, and pepper, salt and pepper, you think about again. But Run DMC, of course, a- Eric and Parrish. What I'm saying is Run DMC a duo. There's yeah. three of them. Right, but Run DMC is Run DMC. Even though they say Dan Jam Master J. Two rap, but I'm saying, but that's why I said, do we qualify Gangstar because Primo is just the producer? Right. Do we qualify Eric B and Rock Kim yeah, because don't. Eric we B don't. was making beats? He rock CL smooth. It, that's what right. I'm saying. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no. it's, so it's yeah, like it is. If we're if we're saying just the two are like you have yeah. to also rap, then it's right. you guys. It's Outcast. It's probably Mob Deep. But you got to think about the the, the impact of Eight Ball. Yeah, the and Eight Ball and the, MJG the impact of UGK and the, UGK. Yeah, yeah. I would put yeah. UGK as my fourth spot. Right. UGK for Humongous. sure. Humongous. Because if you think of UGK and like how they influenced. Everybody. I know I got UGK on the record. Wow. You got Pimp C verse? Come on, man. It's Kev, I think you don't know me, man, like that, man. This, I don't Pimp C, <laughs> I know I know we always like like there's you know the most influential list, and I think you know it's Jay, it's mm-hmm. Pac, it's you go rock him. But Pimp C's in that discussion. It's yeah. crazy how much Pimp C Oh even though it was only one album, though, but I'm looking at clips still too. Man. Ooh, like, clips! No, no, no. They had yeah, three yeah, albums. Yeah. They had three. Yeah, yeah. But 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 I'm saying with the the impact of their first two albums. Yeah, Hell, first uh, two obviously, albums. Lord yeah. willing. Now you know what? Yeah. If you're talking about my personal favorite, that's a yeah. different list. Yeah. Because to me, the clips as you dangerous. Can see, they're highly dangerous. regarded in my life. Dangerous. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. For yeah. sure, man. I got you. So uh, first week of April, the dynamic duos is coming. Yeah. yeah. And and again, at the end of the day, like it, it's, it's a. It's a, a a situation. Oh, too. I got help the skeleton too. Oh, um, hey man, rest in peace to Sean Price, man. Yeah. I, again, I don't know if if I'm dropping everything at once because there's so many, and, and I want to be able to 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 keep the excitement. But I can go on and tell you that nobody said no to me. People love the idea, love the concept, and everybody was like, "Yo, I got you." I got you. I got you. I got you. you know is, what I'm saying? It, so, is it like um, working with because you've already oh Styles P and Jada oh I mean yeah. shout out to them wow. but I was gonna say the fact they've never did that album together just the two you know they need to do just the, the they, they need to do their version of Iron Man or you know only built for Cuban links right um, well well they did two the they, two purple tapes no I'm talking about. Ghost Fate, or I'm talking about Jada and Styles. Oh, there's, oh, I, need, yeah. I want oh, them no, to just yeah, do I, I, their I, I, version yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah but, but I don't know. If, but they don't want to leave out Sheik. Leave out Sheik, exactly. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Yep. Um, yep. With that being said, though, uh, is it is it like, because you you have a lot of people on that on this project or on these projects that aren't with us anymore. Yes. Uh, yeah, Prodigy, uh, Sean Price, but Tupac Biggie. But I'm used to that. But I was going to ask you, like, is it, is, how, is it like, how much is it like when you hear Sean Price's vocals for the first time? Like, I feel like I would get goosebumps and just be like, damn, like, the, is the pressure higher knowing you got to have to kind of like deliver? Because, nah, because again, it doesn't, you know, it's like you, you dope about what you do. Yeah. I ain't whack. Right. No, so, for sure. So, 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 so when, when that beat come on, it's going to be like, oh, wind that back. Right. You know? Because I, I, I don't have an It Sounds Deaf Posse. That come from his brother, Leo Cohen. You know, right. like a, uh, If Sounds Deaf Posse means somebody said, yo, how you like that? Oh, that's dope. Yeah. I don't have the people that's agreeing. You know, don't don't agree with me. You don't fuck with it, don't fuck with it. Right. Just tell me the truth. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I, I, I like about people who I'm around. You know, and I know if it's not good. 
Because I right. sit there and sit there myself and be like, oh, nah, to just, I could have had some better drums. You know what I'm saying? What uh, What did you, like, because coming up, like, 80s Def Jam is kind of like hip-hop fucking allure. Like, when we think about what Def Jam meant, it was, mm. we think about the 80s, right? I think your guys' logo, you know what I mean? Like, 90s, yeah. So, for me, it's like... Uh, I want to know what is something that you were able to learn from being around Leo and Russ. Yeah, that's and also the fact that you were able to kind of like just thrive under them in like a way that I don't think a lot of people would expect. Like, yeah, because I, I was a I was one of the producers and um, along with the group, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, Leo tell the story. Sometimes when 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 Def Jam was was in trouble, Redman came to, to bail out. Yeah, that was like you know? uh, that that weird era where it was like jail felony. Yeah, and the, Warren, the, 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 Warren, the RAL, the RAL yeah. thing that, that was moving in transition yeah. between uh, Polygram and whatever. They always say the, Warren the G's Regulate helped save the label yeah, for a so, sec. I mean, yeah. Leo does not hold no punches about what he speaks about, yeah. how things were. And oh, I know. They need money to hold things up too. But again, EPMD was the fifth group signed to Def Jam. So at the early time when we was at, when Russell came and got us from Seaman Bag Records because they had to audit and... When we came, that was the first time that we saw that um, whether, that we was in, that it, 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 things could be better. Right. Because we had number one albums in the country, back to back, and we didn't have any money. Because at first, you don't look at the money in the beginning. But then when, you, when time goes by and, 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 and we on fire like that, it, it didn't match. Yeah. And Russell was like, we, we got to get them off of there. And, the, and they got us off of there. And they, we signed for $1.6 million at Def Jam at that time in 91. Crazy. What was your um, first nationwide tour like? Run DMC. Opening it was, up for Run DMC. It was, a, it was a 88. It was EPMD, Public Enemy, Jerry Jeff, and Fresh Prince. Jesus. You know? <laughs> That's and, crazy. And, and, and the Run House tour was the tour. And, and Russell was, Run told Russell, go get them boards from Long Island. You know? Because don't forget... We're the up and comings. Mm -hmm. This is Run DMC. So they so at this time the trajectory of of trying to make the tour uh, run, make sure we got the hottest people on it. Because Jay Jeff and Fresh Prince is on fire. On two fire. Records, so Public Enemy is on fire. <laughs> and then all of a sudden these two guys from Long Island EPMD is on fire. Yeah. To the point where when when um we was on the on the tour and, and and Fresh Prince has stopped the show and said, hold up, I want to congratulate EPMD for number one album in the country. Me and Prowse don't know what, what what that means. Right. On on, on Billboard. What do you mean with number right, one? Right, 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 right. You know? But EPMD was that phenomenal. We was number one in the country, back to back on both Crazy. albums. What was it like backstage though? Like at the hotels during those days? Because that's it was crazy because it was arenas. So so again, to be in arenas and have like the, the calzone cases full of clothes or Adidas or like basketball rims in the back, like the stuff that you hear about is what it was. But we I'm a kid. So all this stuff is still brand spanking new. And don't forget, me and Paris rode on Run DMC's bus. We didn't have the money for a bus. And Run invited us to ride with them. Wow. So now automatically, I'm you looking, guys at, are, I'm looking are, at You guys got your own bunk on their bus. I'm on the bottom, though. Yeah. But I'm watching the Adidas walk by every morning to get off the bus. You know? But it was something special because they didn't have to do that, but they did. That's so crazy to think that that tour happened. Public Enemy, Run DMC, PMD, and Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. Run's house. And I don't know where the footage is. I always ask Charlie Mack. He says, oh, no, I have it. I'm like, this is the only thing on, on YouTube that we can't see. Yeah, there's footage for everything else, it feels like. For the, one of the biggest tours, like, after, you know, Fresh Fest and all that stuff. Somebody's got to have VHS yeah. or something somewhere in a closet. It haven't came out yet. Yeah, that's got to be. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Well, look, I appreciate you pulling up. Yeah, uh, me too. The That's, new, it's a great interview. I appreciate that. Thank you, man. The new album's coming uh, first week of April. Yeah. Uh, fully produced by... It's going to be Eric. crazy because you're going to be like, yo, Eric was here talking about this shit. Now I heard this shit. You know? I can't wait to hear oh, it. Hopefully, Monty lets you... Let how, many, um, how many volumes do you think you're going to end up doing? Well, I'm going to do another dynamic duo yeah. with, with, with the young people. Okay. But all young rappers, though. Right. The, the, the ones that know how to rhyme. Right. So, um, and then I'm going to do a soloist. Okay. Um, still under the name of Dynamic Duo. They did them a duo R&B thing where all the R&B acts that, that people are not talking about, I'm putting them together too. Mm, that's going to be hard. Yep.
There it is, man. No, because it's an easy process. This is, like, you do this in your sleep. Yeah. Much as it might in sound like a lot, it's nothing. Well, I appreciate you pulling up. I look forward to hearing it, man. You. Eric right. Sermon. Boom! Kev, there you go. Fire. Want to shout out to Hardeen, man. Hey, don't forget, this interview was brought to you by Hardeen. And when you're hitting Las Vegas, you got to stop off at Hardeen. Tell the Uber driver, the taxi driver, take me to Hardeen. They're going to take you. They're going to get you right. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you go visit them at uh, HardeenLasVegas.com. Go follow them, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. And when you go and check out the most craziest premium selection of cannabis in the world, um, make sure I saw you tell them I sent you. They're going to get you situated. Salute to Hardeen. Thank you for watching.